Welcome back. In this video and the next one, we're going to learn how to do the evaluation using the Weka API from our Java source code. Before uh, starting with the coding, I'd like to make sure that you are actually familiar with evaluation, with the evaluation metrics, and in general with Weka and the uh, and programming in Java. Now let's go to the documentation. If we go to Weka dot classifiers the package worker dot classifiers then we can find the class called evaluation you can read it's a class for evaluating machine learning models so Weka mainly uses this class for evaluation and we must be familiar with it if we want to learn how Weka works and how to use it how to use the API from our Java source code now the good thing about Weka in general is that we can actually find some about the documentation in general is that we can find code snippets showing us how to typically use a certain class. Uh, we load instances in, in, uh, in, in the normal way. Now notice now we have two data sets, one for training, one for testing, and we have our classifier. Then we create uh, an object of type evaluation. We pass it the training instances. When we create it, we pass it the training instances. Then there's a method called evaluate model in this class, in the evaluation class. We pass it our classifier, our scheme, and we pass it the test instances, and then we can print out several evaluation metrics. So the dot to, to summary string prints out several evaluation metrics. Now, there's a large list of extremely interesting methods. We can print out, for example, a lot of evaluation metrics, for example, area under the curve, it returns double, so it returns the area under the curve for those predictions that have been collected in the evaluate classifier method. And notice we pass it a class index. What that means is that if our data set, for example, of the class variable is, is nominal and it has four distinct values, then we pass, then in order there will be 0, 1, 2, and 3. We pass it. The class index may be class 0 and it gives us an area under the curve for the first class or maybe we pass it 1, it gives us an area under the rock curve for the second class and so on and so forth. Uh, we can print out confusion matrix, we can return, uh, uh, sorry, uh, have uh, a copy of the confusion matrix. I hope you know what the confusion matrix is. We can do cross validation. Uh, we can get the error rate. As I said, there's a large list of extremely useful functions cross-validation and this one evaluate model so these are two ways of doing evaluation and then we can get a lot as I said of evaluation metrics like I, as you can see Kappa statistic some of them need, need a class index like area under the curve uh, and now I hope you know how to actually do that now enough talking let's have a look at the sample code that I have prepared now I must say some of the code here and in the next lesson uh, I've taken them from the uh, Weka wiki pages very useful code samples there. Now let's import the required classes. Record.code instances, the usual way of loading data, and then our classifier is going to be the decision tree J48 and worker.classifiers.evaluation. We load our training data. I just call it data set here, but we should maybe call it train data set as in the example we saw in the documentation. We don't always we do always remember, do remember to set the class index and then we build our classifier and then we create our evaluation uh, object evaluation eval equals new evaluation we pass it the training set so the first data set and then now I have another data set it's the iris data set by the way I'm using, I'm using the iris data set for training and then I have another copy of it with you know changing the classes here and there I call it iris test that's what that one is going to be used for uh, or is going to be used as the data set so we do it the usual way low, get the instances object and then set the class index and then now we call the evaluate model method now now evaluate so we evaluate model or evaluate class what we do is we um, um, call the evaluate model method we pass it our classifier which is the tree and the test data. After that, after we do the evaluation, we can print out several uh, evaluation metrics. As we said, we can do a, a dot to summary string. 
let me comment this out first and then show you how it works and then we'll come back to them so let me just save and run and as you can see here we can actually get these statistic these uh, statistical measures or these uh, metrics from the dot dot, dot to summary string method uh, <coughs> the accuracy like correctly classified instances number of them and the percentage incorrectly classified instances kappa statistic and so on and so forth another list of extremely interesting uh, methods is for example the pct correct percentage of correctly classified which is the same as here for incorrect area under the curve the one we saw before we passed a class index here i'm passing one for the second class but you can um, the r set set has three classes so we can do zero one or two the kappa statistic uh, mean absolute error and so forth error and so on and so forth precision recall for which class we want them for the second class or maybe the class we want the f, f measure and the error rate and then we can also print out the confusion matrix dot to matrix string prints out the confusion matrix if i save and run then as you can see here now we have the list of uh, um, uh, evaluation metrics as we mentioned before and this is the confusion matrix for the three classes um, <coughs> This is the actual value and this is the predicted value for the class the first class is a second is b third is c a b and c and these counts i hope by the way you're familiar with what the confusion matrix is uh where we can print out you get you know the number of true positives true negatives and things like that now let's do tenfold cross validation it's quite easy uh what we need to do is i'm importing here as you can see class random so what we need to do is get a random seed so what I did here is random rand equals new random of one so that's our random seed we're going to use that and pass it to evaluation uh, class so we can randomize the data and the number of folds we want and then let's comment out the evaluate model and call method cross validation I'm sorry cr cross validate model we pass it three values the classifier object after we've built it with a training data set we pass it the test data set object the one we retrieved here and then the number of folds 10 folds of course you can you can have two or more folds and the rand variable here the random seed so we can randomize the data if we go and read a little bit about cross validate model control if let me just find it cross validate model if you read about it it performs a stratified if class is nominal what that means is that if the class va variable is nominal as is the case in our IRS data set then it does stratification I hope you know what stratification is it performs stratification if the class is nominal cross validation for a classifier on a set of instances now performs a deep copy of the classifier before each call to build classifier just in case the classifier is not initialized properly so that just in case what they do is they create a deep copy of the classifier before actually calling the build classifier anyway so that, that's how it works we pass it uh, four, 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 uh, four parameters and when we call it we just call it that way execute and we get the evaluation metrics as the usual way now in the next video I'm going to show you how you can get hold of the folds now we can't get hold of them but I'm going to show you how you can do that from your Java source code so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video